So guys, so what I have here is my old uh, Amiga 500. It says 600, but that was the power supply that came with it there. You can change them for one another. Um, and that was the one I had when I was a kid. Um, and uh, it had stopped working a few years ago. I put it away. I had another one and forgot about it. But um, I always meant to see if I could fix it. Uh, so it's actually, you opened it very easily. It's secured by uh, four big screws here at the back. Uh, these are these guys here. And then uh, inside you have your uh, uh, PCB or you know whatever board. Um, so it's a pretty standard power supply. There's nothing there much. So just always be careful when you're dealing with these because these uh, these caps here uh, can store up to uh, 385 volts. So make sure you either discharge them or. Uh, it's been a long, long time since the last time it was charged, which is the case here. So I think we're pretty safe. Um, so there's a lot of dust. I'm going to have to clean that. And straight away, actually, I'm seeing two burnt resistors here. Yeah, let's see if I can magnify. Um, are they burnt or are they just totally fried and toast? Oh, yeah, they're. You can see they're cracked. Oh, this one. I'm going to need a bit more light for this one. Oh yeah, this one is completely stripped. Wow. So these are burnt. What does it look? Oh yeah, it looks uh, nice and toasty on the underside. There's some discoloration. And uh, have we got a lifted trace? It's hard to know with resistors. Um, which, yeah, I think, hold on. Yeah, we've got actually three cold solder solder set when I use the uh, American term for solder 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 doesn't matter I use whatever I want <laughs> my English is not my first language so um yeah okay there's cold solder joints here at least three uh, maybe this one here on the other side and this one is fine but that's another one of the that's the end of those two resistors uh, here should have the diode here and the transistor here. Do you want? It might. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna gonna need to find out what value these are, obviously, and change them. Might need to change the, um, or might want to change the transistor as well. Link to that. I just need to find what value these are. And uh, come on, there you go. And maybe the diode beside it. Um, it's hard to tell. Wouldn't hurt anyway. Um, but those two resistors need to uh, need to be changed, obviously. And uh, now luckily, the trace here is lifted between the two. Oh, it's hard to focus on this. Okay, the trace that's lifted between those two here. Uh, th those two are joined, and uh, so the whole trace is lifted off. Then. Good to show you. There's actually a tiny, tiny trace pad between the two. Yeah, you can more or less see it. So obviously I can't fix that, but I just connect the two when uh, that's the uh, that's the only place that trace is is used for is used for. So I can just connect the two anyway when I change them. But I need to find out the value first, and then. Uh, and then change this, see what happens. Might need to change that transistor afterwards and maybe that diode. But um, we'll deal with that once we've changed them. Okay, so before I order anything new, I checked this uh, transistor as well. Um, as you can see here, we've got some discoloration on the leg. Uh, that might just be from the proximity with the, uh, with the uh, resistor, but um, you never know this guy is most likely fried so I need to change that as well it's probably what actually ended up burning those two resistors um, and uh, and frying the uh, the board as well so I checked the um, the diode here it seems to be fine that's in circuit by the way it's never a good idea but um, it tested fine anyway and the uh, the uh, surrounding um, uh, diodes as well tested fine so 
I think that might be just it. The, this transistor um, uh, might have had some issue and burnt the resistor afterwards. Because uh, resistors are essentially a symptom, it's never the cause. So if you have a burnt resistor, something else burnt it. Uh, it burned because the wrong voltage was applied to it. Um, so you have to find which voltage was applied to it. And it turns out that this leg here, uh, this leg here of the resistor is connected to the the uh, transistor. So if we invert here, uh, this is the uh, oh yeah, this is the leg of my uh, burnt resistor. You can see the more big one across, and another one is going across here. Focus, and it's connected to this uh, leg. Actually, that's the emitter. Is it? Yeah, anyway, we need to change this transistor here uh, and those two resistors. Okay, so I have changed my two um, resistors. I've actually put um, resistors with a higher uh, wattage, so they'll actually withstand a lot more heat and dissipation. And I've changed the uh, the transistor here. Um, it's actually a transistor. Um, so. It's time to test. Um, I've actually tested at the end that the voltages were there and they're there. So, I mean, the final test is to um, actually check that this works on my Amiga. So, well, let's uh, switch this on. And uh, it seems, uh, yes, there you go. Our Amiga is booting. Uh, this is now fixed, which is great because now I'm going to use this box um, well, it's great to first to have saved this guy, and uh, I'm also going to use this box as well to test my other um, Amiga 500 board that I have over there, so uh, we can start fixing that. Anyway, guys, that's uh, uh, Amiga. Uh, what's, I think it's called the Light Box or something like that. It's probably going to need a, a cleaning and a retrobiting at some point, but that's. Uh, uh, I'll do a batch of retrobyte stuff at some point. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. That's the uh, Amiga Power Supply, Commodore Power Supply fixed now. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.